Mustafa Abdul Qadir Tlas, Arabic, May 11, 1932 – June 27, 2017, was a Syrian senior military officer and politician who was Syria's Minister of Defense from 1972 to 2004. He was part of the four-member regional command during the Hafez Assad era. Early Life and Education Tlas was born in Rostan near the city of Homs to a prominent local Sunni Muslim family on May 11, 1932. His father, Abdul Qadir Tlas, was a minor Sunni notable who made a living during the Ottoman period by selling ammunition to the Turkish garrisons. On the other hand, members of his family also worked for the French occupiers after the First World War. His paternal grandmother was of Circassian origin and his mother was of Turkish descent. Tlas is said to also have some Alawit family connections through his mother. He received primary and secondary education in Homs. In 1952, he entered the Homs Military Academy. Career Tlas joined the Ba'ath Party at the age of 15, and met Hafez al-Assad when studying at the Military Academy in Homs. The two officers became friends when they were both stationed in Cairo during the period of 1958-1961 United Arab Republic merger between Syria and Egypt, while ardent pan-Arab nationalists, they both worked to break up the Union, which they viewed as unfairly balanced in Egypt's favor. When Hafez al-Assad was briefly imprisoned by Nasser at the breakup of the Union, Flas fled and rescued his wife and sons to Syria. During the 1960s, Hafez al-Assad rose to prominence in the Syrian government through the 1963 coup d'état, backed by the Ba'ath Party. He then promoted Tlas to high-ranking military and party positions. In 1965, while he was Ba'athist army commander of Homs, Lt. Col. Mustafa Tlas arrested his pro-government comrades. A 1966 coup by an Alawite-dominated Ba'ath faction further strengthened al-Assad, and by association Tlas. Tensions within the government soon became apparent, however, with al-Assad emerging as the prime proponent of a pragmatist, military-based faction opposed to the ideological radicalism of the dominant ultra-leftists. Syrian defeat in the 1967 Six-Day War embarrassed the government, and in 1968 al-Assad managed to install Tlas as new chief of staff. After the debacle of an attempted Syrian intervention in the Black September conflict, the power struggle came to open conflict. In 1969, Tlas led a military mission to Beijing, and secured weapons deals with the Chinese government. In a move deliberately calculated to antagonize the Soviet Union to stay out of the succession dispute then going on in Syria, Mustafa Tlas allowed himself to be photographed waving Mao Zedong's Little Red Book, just two months after bloody clashes between Chinese and Soviet armies on the Ushery River. The Soviet Union then agreed to back down and sell Syria weapons. Under cover of the 1970 Corrective Revolution, Hafez al-Assad seized power and installed himself as dictator. Tlas was promoted to Minister of Defense in 1972, and became one of al-Assad's most trusted loyalists during the following 30 years of one-man rule in Syria. Azad Abu Khalil argues that Mustafa Tlas was well suited for Hafez al-Assad as a defense minister in that he had no power base, he was mediocre, and he had no political skills and his loyalty to his boss was complete. During his term as defense minister, Mustafa Tlas was functional in suppressing all dissent regardless of being Islamists or Democrats. On October 19, 1999, Defense Minister of China, General Qi Haoshan, after meeting with Mustafa Tlas in Damascus to discuss expanding military ties between Syria and China, flew directly to Israel and met with Ehud Barak, the then Prime Minister and Defense Minister of Israel where they discussed military relations. Among the military arrangements was a $1 billion Israeli-Russian sale of military aircraft to China, which were to be jointly produced by Russia and Israel. At the beginning of the 2000s, 
Tlas was also Deputy Prime Minister in addition to his post as Defence Minister. He was also a member of Ba'ath Party's Central Committee. His other party roles included the head of the Party Military Bureau and Chairman of the Party Military Committee. Controversial Writings and Controversies Tlas attempted to create a reputation for himself as a man of culture, and emerged as an important patron of Syrian literature. He published several books of his own, and started a publishing house, Tlas Books, which has been internationally criticized for publishing alleged anti-Semitic materials. In 1998, Syrian Defense Minister Tlas boasted to al Bayan newspaper that he was the one who gave the green light to the resistance in Lebanon to attack and kill 241 U.S. Marines and 58 French paratroopers, but that he prevented attacks on the Italian soldiers of the multinational force because I do not want a single tear falling from the eyes of Jinalala Brigida, whom loved ever since my youth. In October of the same year, Tlas stated that there was no such country as Jordan, but only South Syria. Tlas had also boasted to the National Assembly about cannibalist atrocities committed against Israeli soldiers who fell captive in the Yom Kippur War. I gave the Medal of the Republic's Hero, to a soldier from Aleppo, who killed 28 Jewish soldiers. He did not use the military weapon to kill them but utilized the axe to decapitate them. He then devoured the neck of one of them and ate it in front of the people. I am proud of his courage and bravery, for he actually killed by himself 28 Jews by count and cash. There have been three missing Israeli soldiers in the Baka Valley since the June 1982 war in Lebanon. Tlas allegedly told a Saudi magazine, We sent Israel the bones of dogs, and Israel may protest as much as it likes. During his career, Tlas also became known for colorful language. In 1991, when Syria was participating on the coalition side in the Gulf War, he stated that he felt an overwhelming joy when Saddam Hussein sent Scud missiles towards Israel. In August 1998, Tlas caused a minor uproar in Arab political circles, when he denounced Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat as the son of 60,000 whores. The long-standing conflict between the Assad government and the Palestine Liberation Organization would not end until after Hafez al-Assad's death in 2000. In 2000, the widow and children of I.R.A. Weinstein who was killed in a February 1996 Hamas suicide bombing, filed a lawsuit against Tlas and the head of Syrian military intelligence in Lebanon, Ghazi Kanan charging that they were responsible for providing the perpetrators with material resources and training. In an interview which aired RT on June 8, 2009, as translated by memory, Flass claimed that actress Gina Lala Brigida had once told him that he was the one love in my life. He also claimed that Lady Diana wrote him letters that were full of love and appreciation. He also claimed that Prince Charles gave him a submachine gun as a gift books. Tlas opened a publishing house in Damascus and was the first person to try to uncover pre baath Syria in an objective manner. Tlas also wrote books about Syria's military and political history and also books of poetry, general Arab history, and a history of the military tactics used by Muhammad. His writings allegedly reflect anti-Semitism and belief in conspiracy theories. He also published two-volume memoirs, namely Mirat Hayatai, Reflections of My Life, in 2005. The Matzah of Zion In 1983, Flass wrote and published The Matzah of Zion, which is a treatment of the Damascus Affair of 1840 that repeats the ancient blood libel, that Jews use the blood of murdered non-Jews in religious rituals such as baking matzah bread. In this book, he argues that the true religious beliefs of Jews are black hatred against all humans and religions, and that no Arab country should ever sign a peace treaty with Israel. Flass reprinted the book several times, and stands by its conclusions. Following the book's publication, Flass told Der Spiegel, that this accusation against Jews was valid and that his book is an historical study, 
based on documents from France, Vienna, and the American University in Beirut. Regarding the book, Plas has stated that I intend through publication of this book to throw light on some secrets of the Jewish religion based on the conduct of the Jews and their fanaticism and that both Eastern and Western civilizations threw Jews into ghettos only after recognizing their destructive badness. He also claimed that since 1840, every mother warned her child, do not stray far from home. The Jew may come by and put you in his sack to kill you and suck your blood for the Matzah of Zion. In 1991 the Matzah of Zion was translated into English. Egyptian producer Munir Rati subsequently decided it was the ideal Arab answer to the film Schindler's List and later announced plans to produce a film adaptation of the Matzah of Zion. The book also reportedly served as a scientific basis for a renewal of the blood libel charge in international forums. In 2001, Al Aram published an article titled A Jewish Matzah Made from Arab Blood which summarized the Matzah of Zion, concluding that, the bestial drive to need Passover matzahs with the blood of non-Jews is in the records of the Palestinian police where there are many recorded cases of the bodies of Arab children who had disappeared being found torn to pieces without a single drop of blood. The most reasonable explanation is that the blood was taken to be kneaded into the dough of extremist Jews to be used in matzahs to be devoured during Passover. After Hafez al-Assad The succession of Bashar al-Assad, Hafez's son, seems to have been secured by a group of senior officials, including Plas. After the death of Assad in 2000, a nine-member committee was formed to oversee the transition period, and Plas was among its members. Whether true or not, Plas and his supporters were viewed by many as opponents of the discreet liberalization pursued by the younger al-Assad, and to maintain Syria's hardline foreign policy stances, but also as fighting for established privileges, having been heavily involved in government corruption. In February 2002 in the Jordanian Daily Al-Duster stated that Plas submitted his letter of resignation to Bashar al-Assad, and was set to step down in July 2002. However, in 2004, Plas was replaced by Hassan Turkmani as defense minister. It is also argued that Shokat pushed for the removal of Mustafa Plas. Plas also quit the regional command in 2005. Mustafa Plas and his son, Firaz, both left Syria after the revolt against Assad began in 2011. Mustafa Plas left for France for what he described as medical treatment. Firaz, a business tycoon, left Syria for Egypt in 2011, too. It is also reported that he is in Dubai. In July 2012, Manif Plas, a Syrian officer and another son of Mustafa, defected from the Assad government and fled to Turkey and then to France. Personal Life Plas married Lamia al Jabari in 1958. She is a member of the Aleppine aristocracy. His marriage secured his position among the traditional elite and enabled him to advance socially. They have four children Nahid, born 1958, Firaz, Born 1960, Manif, born 1964, and Surya, born 1978. His daughter Nahid was married to Akram OJJ, who was a Saudi millionaire arms dealer. Nahid Plas has lived in Paris since the onset of Syrian uprising. His younger daughter, Surya, is married to a Lebanese from Baalbaq. Plas was the only member of the Ba'ath government who took part in the traditional social establishment of Syria. His hobbies are said to include horseback riding, tennis, and swimming. Plas died on June 27, 2017 in Avicenne Hospital in Paris, France at the age of 85. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.